I just traveled south from the San Fernando Valley into Hollywood on the Red Line. I want to welcome you to my next video. Amoeba, the grandfather of records and a Hollywood icon. I hope you have become a subscriber, and if you have, thank you for showing support for my channel. You can support my channel by simply clicking the thumbs up. Thank you so much. If you've heard the news, Amoeba Music in Hollywood is going to be gone. If you're wondering what's going to go there in its place, well, here's a very good example. Not sure if it'll be as tall, but it's going to be big. Nearby Amoeba Music is the Pacific Cinema Dome, otherwise known as the Dome. When will this Hollywood icon become a victim as well? Get your last looks because this is what it looks like today in January 2020. Soon this will just become a faded memory. Amoeba Music is known for its great exchange policy. They have records, CDs, DVDs, collectibles, and books. Let's start with books. Hey, we're coming up on some books here. We got Marilyn Monroe. We also have the other Marilyn, Miss Manson. We have some David Lynch, R.E.M., a band from the 80s all the way up to 2011. We have Spin. And the biggest thing here is Pedro Archives for $125 if you have that kind of money lying around. Okay, well, the talk of Hollywood. Amoeba Records, is it moving? Is it going out of business? Well, I can tell you this. Amoeba Records Los Angeles store will move to a new location within blocks of its current spot on 6400 Sunset, where it's been since first opening its doors back in, get this, 2001. To me, it seems like this store has been there for Ever, and I can't believe that it's only been open since 2001. We're going upstairs. You can check out some of those posters. Here are some of the box sets. Now, let's head upstairs to the DVD section. Wide variety of movies, TV, both Blu-rays and not. Many cult classics, nearly anything that has ever been made in anywhere, especially Hollywood. Amoeba seems to have it. Now, three nearby properties are being considered within the 20,000 square foot range, two of them along Hollywood Boulevard, but maybe 50% smaller space than the current building. The official announcement, I think, has already been made. Now, get this. Amoeba sold the 6400 Sunset Boulevard property to a holding company associated with GPI companies in the year 2015 for a reported $34 million, which leased the space back to the Mammoth Record Store. That lease runs out early next year, but we're talking 2020. Zap! To the classic section. And here they have an immense collection of things that go way back. I see some little rascals there, Laurel and Hardy, and if I'm not mistaken, those guys are from the 30s. So they, they've got some good uh, quantities here, some box sets and everything. So might want to check that out. Ah, uh, yes, war. What would America be without war? Or westerns, where we've taken just about everything from just about everybody. While I'm not too familiar with westerns, I'm sure John Wayne is in there someplace. But westerns just aren't in my category. <laughs> okay, as we come down these stairs from the DVD section, look at the panoramic. This is going from west, panning to east. Look how large this store is. As we come back down the stairs, you can see all the posters in the background. But look at this space back here. You got all this Soul and Motown. Look how much space they've allotted for this music. Oh, Motown. I love Motown music. GPI 
are developers whose property include the Promenade at Howard Hughes Center near Los Angeles International Airport and the Granada Hills Town Center. Amoeba's uh, location instantly became a Hollywood landmark. Documents published by the Los Angeles Department of Planning in August of 2017 indicate that the site will be demolished and replaced by a 28-story contemporary glass and steel tower with 232 residential units. That should help the busy intersection nearby. Look up at the 45s on the walls. No, not guns. Records. These are collector items. Let's take a closer look at what they have and these are for sale. The average price is between $30 and $60 for a single 45. I remember the days when 45s were about a buck 19. <laughs> That's been a long time ago. What a fantastic collection. These start on the corner of the west wall and go along the north wall to the east wall. Continuing down the aisle there, I'm going to pan in and do a close-up of some of these beetles. Got some beetle stuff ranging from $20 to $25. I see a 45 up there from Japan. And there's some picture disc 45s up there. I haven't seen that in a very long time. Oh, there's something from John and Yoko and the Two Virgin album, which is $30. Soon, the space where these records are taking, 232 residential units will be there. And it is to include 10 units for very low-income residents. What would low-income mean? Five-figure income? I mean, come on, you're putting in an upscale apartment complex. What are you talking about, low-income? It should include 7,000 square feet of ground level commercial space should the city approve the project. It was expected that the construction would begin in mid-2019, well a little late since it's 2020 now, and be completed in 2021. I guess the completion date's going to be a little off as well. It looks like they've taken some real care in putting these up there. They've got them in nice thick plastic to keep the dust away and to keep them in good condition. Ah, Monopoly. Look, when I was a kid and we played Monopoly, after a while I got sick and tired of it because this thing would last five hours. It was probably when I turned 15 and found out that we weren't even playing by the correct rules. If you follow the correct rules of Monopoly, the game only lasts about an hour. None of this extra money for free parking. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, now we're in one of my favorites. Rock vinyl. Love rock and roll music. I love the bass guitar and the drums. Mm. Two favorites would be Paul on bass and Ringo on drums. Back at some more posters, we have David Bowie, The Stones, Dr. Dre, Queen, and way up at the top to the right was Michael Jackson. Let's focus in on this Jefferson Airplane poster. Before they became Jefferson Starship. I, for one, would not want to move this inventory. I worked for warehousing a lot of my years and we actually had to move once. Not only the office, but the inventory of the warehouse. It was not fun. The type of equipment we moved around was cable equipment. They're going to have to move this very delicate stuff, so I'm curious what precautions they're going to take in moving it from one location up the street to another location. With the massive space and the upstairs that you've already seen, here we got a whole nother section in the back room called the Jazz Section. And here's a little treasure, the Wizard of Oz album. It's sealed and it's $40. I'm surprised this thing hasn't been sold some time ago. Alright, let's go into this Jazz Room. They also have classical music in here. 
Even Jim Neighbors. <laughs> so let's see what's in here. Jazz, Blues, and the Big Band Era. Oh, up in that left-hand corner, an old World War II poster. I wonder if it's an original. I guess some of these DVDs and Blu-rays are some of the big bands and the jazz era movies. You got some uh, posters there. Jimmy Dorsey, Earl Hines, Glenn Miller, Johnny Holmes. Oh, got Shaft. Kill Bill. Oh, Johnny's home. While we're still in the jazz and band section, you can see some Buddy Holly and the Crickets there for $200. Plus there's some Elvis tucked away in there as well. Under lock and key, I guess, these are a little bit more rare and hard to find items. Back to some albums over here, or LPs, long playing as it was known back in the day. We got some Frank Sinatra, Johnny Cash, and a lot of Elvis. Oh look, a Beetle Butcher cover. Ha! Made you look. Hey, it looks like Dr. Spock dabbled in some music here. You got a test press for $50. Amoeba stores also trade in movies through secondary to their music business. In addition, each store maintains a selection of music-related posters and artwork for purchase, as well as Amoeba-branded merchandise. The Hollywood location has the entire second floor dedicated to DVD and Blu-ray discs. In addition, Amoeba Music frequently holds free shows during store hours with locally and nationally known artists from a wide variety of genres. Yes, this is the stage where the magic happens. And speaking of music shows, Paul McCartney recorded his EP Amoeba Secret at an unannounced live performance at the Hollywood location on the 27th of June, 2007. Paul McCartney stopped by for a surprise show. I don't know if you've noticed on the walls where you can see those two-way mirrors up there. Maybe when they put in the new building, they'll add on to that security feature. Are you curious if you're being watched through a two-way mirror? Do this simple test. Place the tip of your fingernail against the reflective surface and if there is a gap between your fingernail and the image of the nail, then it is a genuine mirror. However, if your fingernail directly touches the image of your nail, then beware, for it is a two-way mirror. Here's your punk section. If I remember right, disco lasted from 70 to about 74, and then punk took over. Shortly after that, headbanging music came in. So is this your section? Let's see if I can recall from what I've read. I think it was the 30s was the big band era. Rock and roll in the 50s, 70s, disco, punk, and headbanger. And if you want to go beyond just listening to the music, what I like here is they've got books of all kinds. they got books on movies and music. So you can also read about your artists that you enjoy. And they even put seating so that you can sit there and read some of the books before you buy them. You are going to buy them, right? And that's convenience. I think Amoeba has realized that convenience is a big part of running a successful business. If you go to a grocery store nowadays, they've lost the uh, idea of convenience. And don't get me started on banks talking about lack of convenience. Businesses have just removed that word from their services. Myself, being a beetle collector, I would love to get that anthology book. And there's uh, Marvel Comics, very popular right now. Hey, this summer they're going to be putting out a lot more of the Marvel comic book movies. 
Stranger Things. I really enjoyed the first segment of that. Not really sure about the second segment as much. Star Wars. Man, that was great. Sad that that era has come to an end. Well, lastly we come to the collectibles. Lunch pails, buttons, and a few snapshots and photographs. Oh god, when I was a kid, I guess my lunch pail was the Munsters and maybe Lost in Space, but I wish I was a Beatle fan <laughs> and still had that lunch pail. Now I'm recalling shows like Man from Uncle and even Mission Impossible. And did you know that Lucille Ball was responsible for keeping Star Trek on for another two seasons? And here's something for you Mission Impossible fans. From the original series that ran from 1966 to 1973, as we come out of Amoeba Records and across the street from the Bank of America, Peter Graves was in that second set of windows with the half blind. It was a music store back then. Music stores in that day had booths. You can take the record and go listen to it before you purchase it. Check out Season 3, Disc 4, The Test Case. Leaving Sunset Boulevard, heading north to Hollywood Boulevard. You can see Capitol Records there in the background and then the fabulous Pantages Theater for those who feel like they're missing out seeing Hollywood. So what do you think about Amoeba Records, the icon of record stores, moving to another location? It's a Hollywood icon. And I'm sure the old store is going to be missed, but when they move, maybe they can turn the new store into a Hollywood icon as well. I would love to read your comments on that. If you have any ideas of videos I should do, tell me about them in the comments section, please. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I hope you'll subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. Click on the bell to receive notice of future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.